welcome Dr. Krishna Vilegiri. Thank you. Um, thanks to the uh, ASU IT student chapter, first of all, for inviting me for a, probably a brief presentation. Uh, one hour, you said? Yeah, one hour. Before we uh, start, actually, maybe we should see a video that's uh, very much related to what we'll be talking today. <clears throat> this is this is uh, the courtesy of ADOT, uh, Arizona Department of Transportation, who gave us the video, uh, the noise characteristics of two different pavements, and, and a car was driven on it at 60 miles per hour speed. Okay, let's let's first see the video, and then we can go to this uh, presentation. This is the RFC, asphalt rubber friction course that you've seen uh, in the valley. See the difference now? This is going on a concrete pavement. Again, a change in noise uh, characteristics from concrete to asphalt rubber friction course. The basic premise of uh, applying asphalt rubber friction course was not to reduce noise. It was devised uh, to see if there is any functional characteristic of this material that, that enhances the properties versus a conventional dense graded mix. But then when they, when they started to lay this, uh, overlay asphalt rubber pavements on concrete or a regular conventional, they found that it was really less noisy and the neighborhood wanted the same pavement sections all around Phoenix Valley. This is a, at least 10 year old story. But now we still have as well rubber friction courses uh, in, and around, in and around Phoenix, also in many other states and around the world. Okay. So let's uh, go to the presentation. I just said transportation related tire pavement noise materials elements. This presentation will mainly deal with the basic science, okay, how the noise is generated, and uh, the basic parameters that are inherent characteristics of noise. Okay, that's coming out from the materials, from a materials per perspective. Okay. So the, this is the outline that you see here. So basically, we'll, we will introduce the subject what is noise and how it is measured in field and what is the research that has been done so far in terms of lab evaluation. And then what we did at ASU, what we have been doing for the last six, seven years. Okay. Uh, basically, the evaluation will, uh, will, will be under two different heads. One will be the viscoelastic properties. We will see what it is. That's more of the material science. And then also the dampening properties, that's also related to acoustics, okay, physics part. And then we also see what field noise validation studies that we did at ASU in conjunction with ADOT. Okay. And many other states uh, in the US. So noise has been, uh, has become a global problem in urban areas. And this is also, uh, it, was, it was stated even in the World Bank as late uh, as 1997, and traffic volume has been adding about 8 decibels okay, to the highway noise, mainly because of the traffic. Okay. And mechanical engineers have dealt with the, the vehicle noise very well. They've reduced by almost 20 decibels in the last 30 years. Okay, but materials perspective, we are still doing a lot of research in it, but we have at least come down by about 10 decibels. When you, when you actually see, when, when you saw the video from asphalt rubber friction course to Portland cement concrete, there was a difference of 12 years. Okay. There is a there is a European Union project which aims at re reducing at least 15 decibels. Okay. So there are a lot of studies that are going on around the world. There's a picture here that you see 
where all, almost you see zero, which is silence, okay, to 140. This scale is a logarithmic scale. Okay, so it's zero to 140 dBA. So it's an A-weighted decibel scale, but it's logarithmic. How it is uh, accounted for, we will not do that. We will not actually see that today. It's more of the science and acoustics. At least we, will, we can see that the, the trend changes from all the way from 0 to 140. And this is the hearing range, audible range, which is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Okay. If you have any questions in between, you can stop me. That's okay. It can be more of an interactive session. It doesn't have to be presentation. And you see that there are three different noise uh, elements that acoustics actually, acousticians actually account for. One of them is the aerodynamic, the other one powertrain, and the tire noise. Pavement noise was not actually a part of this noise characteristics until about 1998 or 99, when pavement noise was accounted as part of tire noise. And we still account that as part of tire noise even today. As you can see there, the overall noise, uh, the tired noise curve is very close to the overall noise. So, and this was actually proven in the, in the next figure that I'll show you in the next slide. But before we go there, uh, you can see that the addition of traffic, okay, so the, the first one that you see here, if, if this is 85 decibels, okay, with one single traffic, one element of traffic that flies on the road, then it is doubled. It's not actually that 85 becomes 170. It's, it's three decibels change because it's lovely. And it's the same thing when it is triple. Okay, it's about 89.8. So it's, it's really not a linear scale. That's what I was trying to say. So here, as I told you, the, the curve of the tire noise was closer to the overall noise. And it was seen that the vehicle, vehicular characteristics, the tire pavement interaction noise, was really higher than the vehicle noise. And the scale is all, all the way from 58 to about 70, 76 decibels. And the blue, blue color that represents is, is the silence. Silence, that you see. silence meaning there's less noise. It's not zero. Silence compared to 78 decibels that's coming from the vehicle tire pavement. Yes, so when you say tire noise, are you accounting for like four tires? Yes, it's it's normalized. So if you have heavy vehicles, then you would. There, yes, there's a difference between automobile uh, noise versus the truck noise. Okay. Yeah. Now, all the literature that we have with, with respect to tire pavement noise comes from the cars, <laughs> and not from the trucks. Because they, they do have the noise coming from the trucks by itself is higher than the tire pavement interaction. And is the figure on the previous slide in the top left corner? Can you go back to one? Is that is this a cumulative figure or is this incremental? Sorry, is tire noise twenty? Was that decibels or is it actually close to eighty? It's it's about seventy. Yeah, it's about. Okay. Uh, what's the question again? Sorry. So is is this figure cumulative? It or? is. It is. Yeah, there are different uh, units. Of noise, yeah, as you see here, it's dBA, there is dB, and dBc, dBb. So they're all weighted based on different normalization patterns. And this is dBA. The normal way of weighting is is A weighting. That's what you see here, dBA. And this weight is accounted by the statistical pass by method that that you will see in the next few slides, which is used to measure the field noise. Okay, but later on, we, we, right now, we have some, something else called OBSI, the onboard sound intensity, which is still A-weighted, but the values can vary all the way from 90 to about 110. I, I'll show you. you. You will understand that better when you... Yeah, but to answer your question, yes, this is cumulative. So see here, so as I told you before, there are three different noise sources. One is the pavement, the other one is the engine and the exhaust. Okay, so the, the picture here represents that high pavement interaction noises is the <coughs> main contributor of the overall noise. And uh, the, the tight pavement noise characteristics are mainly pronounced at 
speeds higher than 25 miles per hour. That, that, that's the research that, that is, that's there everywhere right now. And road noise has affected human welfare in terms of children's growth, ability when you're closer to the freeways, children don't sleep during nights. There, there is noise that, <clears throat> many other adverse effects due to noise near the freeways. Okay, so the, the presentation will mainly deal with pavement noise and the materials aspects. We will not deal with how the mechanic, mechanical properties of the machines or the trucks play, play, play a role here or contribution of uh, vehicle noise here. We will just deal with the materials part. As you saw in the previous slide, tire pavement interaction is a major contributor. So that was the premise of the research that, that underwent all through 2004 and until 2000. We still, we still are doing a lot of research in this area. And when it comes to tire pavement noise by itself, there are a lot of factors that, that dominate. Okay, there are a lot of sources through which noise can occur in pavements. One of them is the air pumping. It's still a tire property. So the tread pattern in the tires, the squishing of air through the treads plays a major role. Okay. Compression of the tread block, but still the compression, but it's still an interaction between the tire and the pavement. Okay. And then there is friction. That's still a material property. Thickness has been accounted as one of the factors. Okay. It's still not it's still a conjecture. We, we really do not know if thickness is, has played a major role or how much does it contribute. Is it 80% or 20%? We don't know. But, but still, thickness has an effect because the, the mass, the storage capacity of the pavement can play a major role in terms of noise attenuation or magnification. <coughs> but then we, at ASU, we, we concentrated more on the pavement material side, the viscoelastic properties of the asphalt concrete, because ASU has been a major player in terms of accumulating the data, material characteristics, and asphalt concrete. We also came up with, uh, with another property, which is dampness. It's not that we came up; it's already there. It's it's more of the physics, okay, the dampening properties that you see here. So we came up with a new methodology that can actually characterize dampening properties of the different materials, and we'll see what it is in the next few slides. Again, rubber particles in materials, as well rubber. What has has rubber an influence in in asphalt rubber? materials, is, is there a contribution of rubber? That's, that was the other question that we had. And then again, porosity. Asphalt rubber friction courses, materials, they, they have very high porosity. They're really porous materials. So when you compare this with the pervious concrete, which is still porous, does it really have an influence? That, that, that's not there in, in this part of the study, but that's the other question. Then with the age, what happens with noise? That's the other question. Okay. But, but this particular presentation will deal with viscoelastic properties and dampening. <coughs> so how did we actually characterize those two? So if you have like cracking, like alligator cracking and flooding and things like that, obviously those things are going to affect. Yes, uh, yes I, I'll show you so how. how they are incorporated sure. in that diagram. Absolutely. The surface characteristics, the distresses, those also <coughs> affect, <coughs> apart from this A and thing. The distresses do affect, sure. OK, so the, the field noise studies that I've undergone through, uh, one of them that you see here, this, this was the one which was the basis of that dB scale in, in that you saw in the previous slides. <coughs> this is called the statistical pass by. You have a microphone that records the noise measurements. And that's away, about 50 feet away from the center of the pavement section. And then there is the NCAT trailer, National uh, Center for Asphalt Technology trailer that, that they built. But they donated it to ADOT in uh, 2001 or two. But they did have, so this is the uh, exaggerated view of this trailer here. So they did have two microphones, which used to record the noise. Okay. But then they found that there, there could be some flaws with, with this setup, because this is 
this is an external setting away from the vehicle by itself. So they would want it, they wanted to measure.